as as a education pioneer, I would like to give the classroom back to our students. So I would like to start in a small step first, try to change some curriculums, some classroom settings, and then help the student actually learn something, and then help them to prepare for the future. So as a pioneer in education, uh, what I want to change most in Hong Kong is I want to let teachers in Hong Kong um, to try to think about themselves more because this is one of the things that most Hong Kong teachers ignore or forget uh, in Hong Kong. And so, uh, yeah, in this case, so in Hong Kong, teachers will get very frustrated very easily and they will burn out simply because they uh, forget that they are also human and they need space uh, and they need inspiration and they need to go outside of the classroom and have a look at the world and see what's happening outside and to have to meet new people and then to see new things Yes, so that is one of the things that I think it's most important. When I go back to Hong Kong, I want to uh, bring a message to all my colleagues that innovation is not a big monster. Actually, what we are, we are doing is innovation already. Just a small step, small step, different from yesterday, you are an innovator. What uh, inspired me the most and what I have the greatest feelings about the last week is um, the education system in Netherlands is uh, very flexible and it's very free and it's all based on the trust of the students. So for example, in the classroom, you can see all the students can choose their own pace of learning. They are not learning the same thing at the same time and they can choose whatever they like and the way they want to learn it. And also, even the teacher have a great flexibility that to choose what, uh, how they teach it. They may not be able to choose what they teach, but they can choose how they teach it. And that's what, um, really inspiring, and I would like to try that in Hong Kong also. So what inspired me most um, about the uh, education innovation in the Netherlands is uh, the uh, freedom and the autonomy and also the space that um, the government uh, give uh, every individual here. If you have some uh, innovative ideas, so um, the government will just uh, give you space to realize your uh, ideas. This week in Netherlands, um, I have visited uh, quite a lot of schools, and most in, uh, inspiring me that is uh, the visit to Allen Turning School. Uh, the principal. Eva and the teacher Martin, they have a big heart to do the change for the school out of their personal interests. And uh, they really have a way to break the rules. Actually, they, 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 they won't say break the rules, but they will think what they need to do first and then the rules come to second. And then when the rules told them that it doesn't work, they will make another way. Uh, I, I think it must bring to Hong Kong because when you have to make a change, you cannot follow the rules. Otherwise, it is not a change. Um, if I would like to suggest something that maybe the Netherlands can learn from Hong Kong is that I would like to give an example. So last um, two days ago, we visited a school and there's a Chinese girl that just um, migrated to Netherlands for four weeks. So. She make a comparison between the education in China and Netherlands and she finds that there may be a little bit too much freedom in the classroom that she finds it's very hard to follow what's going on because the teacher will just give a question and then they need to start do everything by themselves. So maybe a little bit, a little bit more guidance will be better but um, of course I, I don't suggest uh, you take every freedom away from the students. So that's maybe a little suggestion. I think um, Netherlands education system can learn from uh, us is practice, practice, practice. And in Asian educa edu educational system, you know, we have a lot of practice. Okay, so maybe um, there are lots of themes uh, learning in Netherlands, but without practice or framework. Um, it doesn't go good. But for Hong Kong, we have to try to learn 
uh, how to less practice, less practice. For Lada Land, maybe learn how to more practice, more practice. Balance, take a, get, take a balance. Um, the interesting thing that I uh, see in the Netherlands is I do find that uh, people in the Netherlands are carefree and they are very nice and I can see that people in the Netherlands are very diverse and everyone has his or her own style. What's so special and what I've observed um, in general in Netherlands is um, I think um, that maybe there's uh, many freedom in, in Netherlands so lots of um, the Dutch can think out of the box so I can see a lot of it's not only in the classroom but everywhere there is uh, innovation and creativity and people love to do um, crazy things. <laughs> That's what I like. In Hong Kong, I think um, we are more likely to like follow the rules and yeah, more something more oriented, I guess. Mm -hmm. and really hard to explain. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We also learned from news or uh, uh, others that uh, European country, they usually have a more slow life, enjoy their life, walk slow. But for, uh, before I went to, uh, I come to uh, Amsterdam, I went to, last week I was in uh, Berlin and also uh, uh, Finland, uh, German and, Germany and Finland. Uh, they, they were slow, they walked slow. But in Amsterdam, one of the European countries, people walk really, really fast. And also the bicycle, uh, the cyclists, they, 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 some of them will drive like this, head down, okay, to reduce the air, maybe reduce the air friction. Maybe, uh, your leg is uh, your your leg are longer. Your longer leg, like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but that's really interesting. Before I bring any idea, new project or um, innovation to the school, I have to make sure my team, my colleagues, they're ready. They believe. They have hope that they are capable to make a change together.